Look at this painting. Look at it. I mean, just look at that. It's the cover. It's a Michael Whalen cover for The Stone of Farewell. It's the book I'll be reviewing today. I'm Brian Lee Durfee, author of The Forgetting Moon, published by Simon & Schuster's Saga Press. Today, we will be reviewing book number two in Tad Williams' Memory, Sorrow, and Thorn series, titled The Stone of Farewell. What a great title, by the way. I love Tad Williams' usage of words. If you watched my other videos on Tad Williams, you know that's why I love this series. His usage of words is great. His titles are spot on. The Stone of Farewell, To Green Angel Tower, Dragonbone Chair, Witchwood Crown, River of Blue Grass, Glass, River of Blue Glass, no, Mountain of Black Glass, River of Blue Fire, City of Golden Shadow. You know, those are the other land books. You get the picture. I love the titles of his books. I love the way he uses words. Another thing I love is I bet the guy, talk to him, you know, we have, we share, I'm, I'm a writer. He's a writer. We share the same literary agent. Me and Tad Williams have met. We've had dinners together. We've had lunches together. We've done comic cons together. In fact, we did a comic con panel me, Tad Williams, and our agent, where we discussed how to become get published. I will provide a link to that at the top of this video. At the end, if you want to watch me and Tad Williams talk about the publishing business. It's a great video. It's about an hour long. You will learn everything you need to know about getting published in that video. I promise you. One of the things I learned about Tad Williams as I've hung out with him is he used to play in a band. And they used to cover Bay City Roller songs. So I wore... My Bay City Roller t-shirt in honor of that. Also, the Bay City Rollers was the first album I ever listened to as a kid. I didn't buy it with my own money, you know, my parents. They had one of those record clubs where you get like 13 albums for, for a penny. They let me choose one, and I chose the Bay City Rollers. Listened to it forever until I got, you know, my own money and could buy my own albums. Then I kind of leveled up in the music thing. But hey, Tad Williams, he said he was in a band. He said he covered Bay City Roller songs. Gotta wear a shirt. Gotta wear it for the Stone of Farewell review. Man, I read the Dragon Bone Chair, which is right there. When it first came out, first week it came out, I saw it on the bookshelf. I bought a hardcover copy of it. Read it, devoured it, loved it. Changed my life. Changed the direction I was going to go as a writer. And I was just a kid. I was writing crap. I wasn't even writing anything back then. I was just dreaming of writing. But the Dragon Bone Chair, man, it changed all that. It really, it really made me start to figure out how to write and how to put words together that were beautiful sounding together. Words that looked good together on the page. Because it's an art form, you know. Make those sentences look, not that just that they read good on the page, but that the words actually aesthetically look good on the page side by side. That's what Tad Williams taught me. He's that great of a writer. His world building in the Memory, Sorrow, and Thorn series, which we're talking about, this being book number two, is impeccable. That's another thing I learned from Tad Williams is, you know, up until that point, J.R.R. Tolkien was the only one that really did massive world building. Frank Herbert did it in Dune. All the other fantasy authors did a pretty darn good job of it, like David Eddings, Raymond Feiss, Terry Brooks, the Dragonlance guys, all those people writing fantasies in the late 70s, early 80s and stuff. They did a decent job, but it wasn't until Tad Williams came along that he started to rival what J.R.R. Tolkien was doing with just world building on a super epic scale, like war and peace type world building, Lord of the Rings type world building where everything is researched, everything is immac immaculate, including the languages. I mean, he, he wrote his own elven language for this book, just as Tolkien wrote a language for the elves in his book. 
Chad Williams wrote his own sort of Norse, Norse language for the Vikings in his book. Fantastic, fantastic stuff. And Michael Whalen did all the cover paintings, cover art. As you saw the painting I was holding up when I started. Stone of Farewell, man. I read Dragon Bone Chair, like I said, the week it came out. And I read it and reread it and reread it and reread it over and over and over, just in anticipation for book number two. I anticipated this book a lot. A lot. And when I do my review of Green Angel to Green Angel Tower, you're going to see someone that was madly, I was madly anticipating the third book. But I was anticipating this one. And when it came out, it had another fantastic Michael Whalen illustration. I devoured this book in like a day and a half after it came out. I just read, 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 nothing but this nonstop. And I loved it as much, if not more, than Dragon Bone Chair. Because I was once again returning to the land of Austin Ard and the Memory, Sorrow, and Thorn trilogy where Simon and Binnebic and Miriam L and Sludig, and our cast of characters like, like Jeriki, a D2, all of them still on their quest looking for the lost swords, memory, sorrow, and thorn. And we end the Dragonbone Chair on a cliffhanger. We start, we start to Green Angel, no, this, uh, what am I holding up? Stone of Farewell. We start Stone of Farewell right after to green, to uh, the Dragonbone Chair ends. Right there in the adventure. It's cold. It's snowy. Binnebic and Kantaka, the wolf, and Simon are captured. Miriam L is lost. She's off on her own adventure. Joshua, the prince, and Elias, the other prince that are vying for the throne, they're doing their own things. Pirates, the bad guy, he's still being the bad guy. The Dark Lord is still going to come out of the north and destroy everybody unless they find Memory, Sorrow, and Thorn, the Three Swords. Everything is ratcheted up to a higher level in the Stone of Farewell. People have died. Simon, our main character, is becoming more and more cynical about life, about his place in life, about what things mean, about why are we at war. Simon is one of my favorite fantasy characters of, of all time, if not of all time. He's kind of like the Luke Skywalker character to me, you know? The orphan farm boy with a destiny. I know it's tropish. Everything about Memory, Sorrow, and Thorn in these books is tropish. But Tad Williams writes it in such grand high fashion that you don't care. And he subverts those tropes in ways that surprise you and make you root for the characters and make you wonder what's happening. And the layers and layers of plot and mystery, that's another thing that Tad Williams did well with these books, is... They weren't just simple fantasy adventures like the world had seen before. These rose above in plot-wise, mystery-wise, character development-wise, rose above not just all of those books that I've mentioned before by Feist and Eddings and Terry Brooks, but rose above even plot-wise and character-wise, even above what J.R.R. Tolkien had done. And I think readers at the time appreciated that because they hadn't read, because keep in mind, these were the late 1980s when these came out. Up to that time, fantasy wasn't what it is today. Fantasy wasn't, I mean, there were no Robert Jordan Wheel of Times. There were no Malazan Book of the Fallens. There were no Patrick Rothfusses. There was no Game of Thrones. There was nothing by me. I was dreaming of doing my stuff. And Tad Williams was striking all the right notes in my brain for a young author to inspire me. And we all know that this series also inspired the Game of Thrones. George R. R. Martin is very frank about that, that he got into fantasy because of Tad Williams' Memory, Sorrow, and Thorn series. So if you haven't really heard of this series, because it is, it is an older series, it's 30 years old. 
If you haven't heard of it, well, you've certainly heard of George R.R. R. Martin and Game of Thrones. And if you want to see what mostly inspired that, it's this series. So you got to get it. If you loved that, you got to get this to see what it's all about. And I anticipated this book's release. I read it. I loved it. And it expanded my mind to new levels again. It, it, it energized me to uh, want to tell stories of my own, to create beautiful stories with well-written prose, not just half-ass the prose, but actually take your time to do each sentence so that it means something and that it is, is uh, vivid and memorable and a pleasure to read and a pleasure to look at on the page. Tad Williams is the guy you've got to study if you want to know how to do that kind of thing. Because there's a lot of authors that don't. I'm not saying that they are bad authors. It's just they choose to write in a more workmanlike style where the writing isn't that noticeable. Which is fine. Those books are fine. I read those books and I appreciate those books. There is no right or wrong way to it. But if you like really vivid, detailed story building, world building, character building that's vivid and imaginative and the words and the prose are just top notch. This is where you go. This is the grand master of it. He did it first. He did it best. No one has yet matched him. You know, there's a few. Guy Gavriel K. He does well. Steven Erickson's The Malazan Book of the Fallen. He's got some great writing. George R. R. Martin has almost perfected it. Of course, you can go back to Tolkien. You can go back to Michael Moorcock and Elric. And there's a lot that come pretty damn close. Even myself, I pride myself on my writing and my prose. Basically because I've let these guys teach me how to do it, how to do it well. But I'm telling you, there is no one better than Tad Williams. And I'm not just saying that because he's my friend and I met him and I've hung out with him. Because I would have said all this 30 years ago when I was a young guy reading these books and never ever even dreamed of meeting the guy. Never even dreamed of meeting my hero. You know, he signed every single one of my books that I've got. Like I said, if you've got a book collection, you've got to get your book signed by your favorite authors. You know, Tad Williams has signed everything. Right over here. What did he say in this one? With all possible best wishes. Eh, that's kind of generic generic. You know, if you if you I, I read this thing he wrote to me in the Dragon Bone Chair and it was a little more personal. What can you do? I gave him a box of like 30 books to sign one night. He was thinking of shit to say. <laughs> he was thinking of shit to say to me. Some, some of it's pretty clever. I'll probably, as I review all of his books, I'll show you what he wrote in all of them. And some of it's pretty funny. That one was pretty much just like, I run out of stuff to say. Just best wishes. Stone of Farewell. Like I said, man. Doesn't get better. Fantasy doesn't get better than this. I'm dead serious about that. I mean, I tried my best to match what Tad Williams did. And I know I fell short. I think my stuff is pretty good. But man, this guy can write. This guy can tell a story. The Stone of Farewell is action-packed. I loved the very last scene. I love the butterflies. I mean, look at the butterflies in that. There's a scene with millions and millions of butterflies at the very end of this that will knock your socks off. I loved it. And that's the thing is, as he writes it so beautifully and vividly that you can just imagine it. A war going on with, in a patch of a billion zillion butterflies where they're just, oh, forget about it. Forget about it. Can't even, can't even compare it to anybody else. It's amazing. Look at this. And look at the Michael Whalen painting. There we've got the butterflies. We've got Simon. We've got one of the swords on his back, got all the little trinkets he's collected over the over time. We've got the Stone of Farewell right there. We've got aspen trees. 
Michael Whalen, man, he does some paintings that are fantastic. He actually did them with paints and brushes. Paints and brushes. You don't get that anymore with illustrations. Book cover illustrations are kind of crap now because it's all computer bullshit. I think mine are great. I know Richard Anderson did these on a computer, but they're awesome. Richard Anderson did great on mine. I love them. In fact, oh, I got to show you. Speaking of the butterflies, I had a scene with butterflies in my book. My second book, The Blackest Heart. I had a scene with butterflies. You can see the little butterflies here. Just in honor of Tad Williams. And the cover artist, Richard Anderson, he uh, put the butterflies in there too. In honor of Michael Whalen. Anyway, just little facts, just little things, just little publishing business kind of things. That's the way my videos are. So behind the scenes stuff, right? How things tie together. How inspiration just flows from one generation to the next. Tolkien to Tad Williams to me, Michael Whalen to Richard Anderson. It all ties together. Stone of Farewell. Again, I rate books 1 through 10. <laughs> 10 plus, 11. This is an 11 out of 10. It is great. 